After watching J.J. Paterka during the Worlds and everything he did to help Germany go far, what's his potential in the NHL? He had a good rookie season, but what's next for him? Do you want me to answer that one? I think, yeah. I think you're more of a Paterka uh, authority. I have some thoughts, but I think you'll have more. So you go first. So Paterka is a guy that I've been really kind of following since I saw him for the first time in 2017. And that was back when he was playing the German U16 team. And we saw him just absolutely annihilate everybody. Uh, just, just such a talented player. Uh, he was playing a lot against older competition. And then, you know, that last year he goes and puts up nearly a point per game as a rookie with the Rochester Americans in the NHL. That, that's not easy to do. That's very impressive. Then he goes this year, he plus 32 points uh, in the his first full season in the NHL. Again, very impressive. Goes out there and he was one of the best players at the World Championship with 12 points in 10 games. And whether you like that tournament or not, I think that the thing you got to point out is a guy like that being such an important player piece of a team like Germany that just moved up the most spots of anybody inside the top 10 uh, in the WHF rankings. That's huge. You know, he will, they needed somebody to be the difference maker. You know, they didn't have Tim Stutzla. Uh, they didn't have Lucas Reichel. Like they weren't at their full strength and Paterka went there. He said he wanted to be there and it started off with a great play uh, in the in the pre-tournament game where he made a great pass from his knees. And then it turned out to be just a guy who was consistent every single game. I was doing game, like star of the night, every or like best players of every game, um, every single day of the tournament. And Paterka was in there almost every single time Germany played. And there was a reason they played for gold and ended up winning silver. But just the way he plays, the way he commands things is incredible. And for someone that is, a second round pick. He was drafted 34 overall in 2020, a draft that, you know, has had some mixed results, but for what he was capable or like where he was drafted, I think he's just exceeding all expectations. This is a guy that I expect to hit 50 points next year. You know, the Buffalo Sabres are on the up. I do expect to see some good improvement from these guys. And I, I do think that he's a top six player. And uh, I think this is someone who maybe 50 to 60 points is what you're getting. But, you know, if he's not on your top line and he's getting 50, 60 points, that's still a lot of value, especially for a guy that, again, fell to the second round. I think a lot of people were surprised about that at that time, too. Like, this is not a like a looking back thing. I think there were a lot of people who were like, wow, that's surprising he fell that far. But the way he's been able to play with Germany, with Rochester, with Buffalo has, you know, he scored everywhere he's gone. And, you know, guys like that, you you got to bet on them. So I do think that Paterka is going to be a very valuable player for the Buffalo Sabres. And I'm very excited for that team's future. Yeah, I am too. And even seeing what Jack Quinn did, sort of finding his feet in the NHL this season too. And even if Peyton Krebs starts to turn on, of course, you have Matt Savoy coming too. There's so much potential. And you already have the guys who are breaking out there like Tage Thompson. So to me, with Paterka, he's a top six talent. Will he be a top six player next year is, is a different question. So yes, he did finish the season. I believe he was on the second line to end the year in Buffalo. But we know that Buffalo is entering its contention window, and that's a team that's looking for veteran forwards. So I'm very curious to see whether you have the Sabres bring in, for example, a Patrick Kane. Do they sign a Vladimir Tarasenko? Someone like that, a veteran presence, a Stanley Cup winner to their forward group. And if that happens, you could have situations similar to what we see with New York Rangers, where you have your young guys pushed down into the bottom six. So kind of like the kid line with the Rangers. So Paterka, talent-wise, I think, yes, he's worthy of a top-six role, but we don't know 100% that he's going to be in one because if Buffalo signs a right-winger, for example, well, Alex Tuck is the first-line right-winger, Patrick Kane could be your second-line right-winger, and Paterka, then he'd be your third-liner. So got to watch carefully what Kevin Adams does. I think Buffalo is going to be pretty active this offseason. I think it's time for them to get aggressive. And to add to that, it looks like they, according to Cap Friendly, they have $16 million in current cap space. And the, they have got two RFAs and Tyson Yost and Kale Clegg. I, those guys are replaceable. And then Zemgus Gergensen, who I don't expect them to ever let him go. And Vinny Hinnestrones. So those guys are all depth guys. So it's not like they're having to sign, uh, you know, Tage Thompson or Dylan Cousins to deals. They got that done. And, and not to mention that their top, their highest paid goalie is Eric Comrie at 1.8 million with two of the best young goalies in the game right now as other options. So this team's got a lot of flexibility to go out there and add some quality players, like you said there. So that could push him down. But when I'm thinking long-term, I think this is a guy who should hit 50, 60 points a year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. That division is, Oh uh, yeah. What do you do about the Atlantic? Like the Leafs and lightning and Panthers and Bruins fashion themselves contenders, but Buffalo's coming. Ottawa's coming. Yeah, Montreal. Montreal, like yeah. the division is just, just silly right now. Yeah.